This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today afternoon news update for Thursday, May 26. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Prominent businessman Ralph Busy Williams is urging the newest police recruits not to give in to the temptation to engage in corruption. Williams was the guest speaker at the 139th Passing Out Parade for police recruits from Anguilla and Barbados yesterday. He said Barbados is one of the safest places to live because of the work of the Royal Barbados Police Force. But he warned the officers to beware of the enticements that could affect their integrity and credibility. I'm telling you that I would like to encourage him to understand and never forget that your integrity, your honesty, and your incredibility is worth more than all the money in the world. They are priceless commodities. Do not ever allow money to corrupt your way of life. It is a dead end street that you will regret forever. The Barbados Water Authority has topped the list of highly indebted state agencies in the Auditor General's report. The document raises concerns about the accounts of about 50 state entities that were not included in government's financial statements. But it says, based on a survey of 28 bodies, there were records of liabilities of up to $1.4 billion. This includes $266 million for the BWA. That figure is made up of 162.5 million in loans, 46.9 million in payables, and 57.2 million in pension liabilities. Other state agencies named include the Barbados Agricultural Management Company, the Barbados Conference Service Limited, Barbados National Oil Company Limited, and the Barbados National Terminal Company Limited. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital and Transport Board are also named on the list. Government Senator Patrick Todd is reporting that 104 households have been connected to the new sewage connection system since the project began in 2012. Todd made the disclosure in the Senate yesterday. What we're transferring to the Barbados Water Authority, to the control of the Barbados Water Authority, is assets valued at a total of 2538000 $781.87. These, these assets will be transferred to the Water Authority uh, as part of the, of course, the Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Fisheries, and Water Resource Management. 210.5 square meters of land at the Garden Lands in Michael. 90 square meters of land at Skeets Road, Bank Hall, St. Michael. Septic tanks, wells, manholes, and sewage pipes. And, 106, and, and, and over 100 uh, connections. Uh, Madam President. Chairman of the CARICOM Subcommittee on Cricket, Dr. Keith Mitchell, is hinting at stepping down from the post. The Grenadian Prime Minister says he's frustrated at the deadlock with the WICB on the way forward for the administration of the regional game. Mitchell was delivering the 19th annual Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Lecture at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus last night. He blamed poor communication for the stalemate in his committee getting the WICB to accept recommended changes to its structure. Mitchell also dispelled any belief that regional prime ministers would want to run West Indies cricket. I want to make it abundantly clear again for everyone, CARICOM has no desire or intention of getting involved in the running of the day-to-day -day management of West Indies cricket. We do not have the yearning or the skills to do it. More our prime ministers are extremely busy people. We have already enough problems and challenges in our countries to deal with. Some of them we're searching for answers years now. 
CARICOM's sole objective in the process of reform is helping in creating a structure and an enabling environment in which West Indies cricket can again flourish and rise to the pinnacle of the sport, a position that it once occupied and enjoyed for more than 20 years. Sisters and brothers, we, any time you become the issue and not the solution, then there is a problem. There's regional and international news after this short break. In news from the region, Guyana celebrates its 50th anniversary today. The country marked the occasion with a flag-raising ceremony at midnight. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart is among regional and international dignitaries who traveled to Georgetown for the celebrations. He was conferred with the country's second highest honor. Commonwealth Secretary General Baroness Patricia Scotland hails Guyana's milestone. I think there's an opportunity for us to celebrate because Guyana has always been one of the diamonds of our region. Small states, but with real beauty. So I'm here to celebrate, I hope in real Guyanese style, uh, and I know that it will be fabulous. So I want to say to all of Guyana, happy anniversary. Be proud of your nation. Be proud of all the wonderful things you have achieved in the last 50 years. But this is just the beginning. There is a lot for us to do. President Granger described Prime Minister Stewart as a true friend to Guyana who stands resolute in support of the preservation of the country's territorial integrity in face of Venezuela's continued threats to Guyana's sovereignty. Further afield, protests are taking place across France as trade unions lead a strike at oil refineries, nuclear power stations, ports and transport hubs. Flights have been delayed and motorways and bridges have also been blocked. There are also reports of clashes between police and youths in the capital, Paris. The industrial action was sparked by labor reforms and Prime Minister Manuel Valls says they will not be withdrawn, but he suggests that they could be modified. And finally, the Italian Navy says it has saved more than 500 migrants after a large fishing vessel capsized yesterday. It is the latest tragedy as thousands continue to make the dangerous journey to Europe. We get more in this BBC report. Another journey to Europe, another tragedy at sea. Migrants aboard this wooden trawler find trouble in open waters off the coast of Libya. The sight of a rescue ship courtesy of the Italian Navy draws those crammed on board to crowd one side. The vessel tilts, then capsizes. Some cling desperately to the deck, but hundreds crash into the Mediterranean. These pictures filmed by the Italian Coast Guard show the chaotic aftermath. Italy's main patrol boat throws life rafts and jackets, while another Italian ship sends out smaller boats to drag the many aboard. In all, 562 people are pulled from the water safely. Seven others are retrieved dead. This type of operation is now all too familiar with the Coast Guard here. In just the past few days, almost 6,000 migrants have been pulled from these waters. Despite the deaths and as Europe's waters turn warmer, many more will continue crossing this popular route. And many more still, like these survivors, will be rescued at sea, left with nothing but a determination to reach their destination. 
That's the news. Remember, there is more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay and supermarkets at gas stations near you. You can also tune into Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marikla Williams. Good afternoon.